in the image of God. So I too will speak. Let there be light. Darkness increased. You headache, I bind you. The headache multiplied. You say, but I'm created in the image of God. I want to say it the way that God said it. Until you are right in obedience with God, you can't. Let's look at Abraham. Our example. Genesis 12. Genesis 12. Very quickly. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Just, just imagine this kind of instruction. Unto a land. He has not shown him the land. What he had, his people, his own country. He said, Get out of it and unto a land I will show you. Obedience is the ability of a man to respond to God's word without analyzing it. When you analyze God's word, you will be paralyzed. There are too many people who sit down and listen to message and all they do in the message is to analyze. No wonder they are so down, paralyzed completely, paralyzed spiritually, paralyzed in their faith, paralyzed every area of their life because they are analyzing the word of God. Some sit down, the only thing they will understand is the mistake, grammatical mistake the preacher made. Go on, verse 2. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be, ble be a blessing. Go on. And I will bless them that bless thee, and cause them that curse thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Verse 4. So Abraham did what? Departed. To so where? Where was he going? Which land? What is the name of the land? May I say this to you? Oftentimes when God gives you instruction, he wouldn't tell you why he is giving you instruction. Your obedience to the instruction provokes his blessing. When God gives you instruction, say do this. He may not tell you why he wants you to do it. When he said to his servant, tell the church to do this, let them clap for me for five minutes. He may not tell the servant of God why he wants you to clap. But if you are obedient, if you are willing, you will eat the good of the land. The problem why people go through Shiloh, go through fasting and prayer and has nothing to show, is nothing but disobedience. Look at a man at the age of 75. God said, I'm relocating you. To where? God didn't tell him. He said, I will make you bless. I'll bless those who bless you. I will cause you to multiply. Where? But the Bible said, he did what? He departed. Obedience is responding to God's word without questioning him. I told you a few Sundays ago, he wrote the script. You are just an actor. When you are time and you finish acting your own script, you disappear out of the stage. He knows what the theme will finally become. You are just a contributing factor to somebody's life and somebody's contributing to your life for life to become whole. Nobody is one self-made, not one person. Somebody say, I hear you. He departed. Abraham departed. In Genesis chapter 17, ladies and gentlemen, Genesis chapter 17, the Bible said, and God came to Abraham, and he said to Abraham, you know what, I want to enter into covenant with you. Abraham was 99 years old, and God said to him, the sign of this covenant is for you to take the people in your house, including you, circumcise yourself. That is the sign of my covenant. And the Bible said, when God left speaking, Genesis chapter 17, go very quickly to verse 20, 23 and 24. Genesis 17, 23 and 24. 
And Abraham took Ishmael, his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were brought with him, with his money. Every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the self same day as God had said unto him. Obedience costs pain. Obedience will disorganize your protocol. Obedience will cause you to look foolish. At 99, what are you waiting for again? What, what, what is this? God said, why did you not come earlier than now? Why are you coming when I'm 99 years old? And God said to him, boy, you know what? Before you are 100, I will give you a child. But for you to get the child, you circumcise. Obedience, responding to God's word without analyzing. He said to him in Genesis chapter 22, take thy son, thy only son, the one you love, and go to Mount Moriah and sacrifice him there. God never promised Abraham anything. Check your scriptures. He didn't tell him what was going to happen. He didn't tell him. I am a mouthpiece of God. So all I hear, what I do is what I hear, I say. I can't do anything. But your obedience is what produces the results. Your obedience. On this journey we are going, ladies and gentlemen, obedience is the key. Let me give you one benefit of obedience. My time is up. One benefit of obedience. You want to get that one? One benefit of obedience. It provokes prosperity. Obedience provokes what? Prosperity. Job chapter 36, verse 11. Job 36, Verse 11. Genesis 26, 1 to 6. 14, 12 to 14. Now Job 36, 11 says, If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Is that the word of God? Is that the word of God? Good. It provokes prosperity. He said to Isaac, Isaac encountered famine, and Isaac was living in Genesis 26. Isaac gathered his family, and they were about to move. God said, stay in the land. Nothing makes God happy that a man is willing to obey. Stay in the land. Stay. The land is not good. Let me make a change. God says, stay. The land is barren. God says, stay, stay, stay. You don't, you, you don't, you, you cannot comprehend the mind of God. Just obey. Stay. And Isaac stayed. And God says, so in this dry land. Why is he saying? He owns the land. He owns the rain. He owns everything. God can fertilize your seed on a concrete. Even if the rain is to fall. Who is in charge? God. God is in charge. He can cause you to prosper where nobody has prospered before. And Isaac sowed in that land. Look at what the Bible said. And he sowed in that same year, and Isaac multiplied. Isaac became great and became very great. And the people envied him. In the same land where everybody was dying, a single man that obeyed began to prosper. Your key to prosperity is obedience to God's word. Look at what he says in his word. In Luke chapter 6, verse 38, he said, listen, 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 listen. I know you're very quick to read. He says, give. Can I hear somebody say give? Did he say sing? Did he say sing? He said what? Give. And it shall be what? Giving back to you. He didn't say confess. He said give. 
And all I need to do here is to do what? Give. Did he say pray? No, tell me now. Did he say pray? And it shall be given to you. What did he say you should do? Ah. That is what obedience is. Can you obey him? Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Pressed down and shaken together and running over. Shall men give into your bosom? Now look at the word. He said, for, the, for with the same measure that you met, with, with it shall be measured to you again. Give. That's what he said. Give and it shall be given back to you. Malachi chapter 3. Obedience. Malachi chapter 3. Verse 8. Malachi chapter 3. Verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offering. Go on. Ye are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me. Even this whole nation. Bring ye. Now this is obedience. Bring ye all the what? The tithes. To the storehouse. That there may be meat in my house. And do what? Prove me. It didn't say pray to me. It said bring. It didn't say pray. It didn't say fast. It said bring all the tithes. And when God gives instruction, all that God wants you to do is to obey. He said bring all the tithes. All. All. Not some. Do you know multitude of people pay tithes in a year and don't receive anything because they are you know, disobedient? Though they come with envelope here, they are lying to themselves and they are lying to God. Bring all. To the storehouse. Then he said, prove me. Prove me. If I will not open the windows. Who are you that God will place himself under such obligation? All he needs to do, obey. Bring your tithe. What is your tithe? 10% of your income. 10% of any money that comes to you. Not money you borrowed. Not the loan you took from the bank. Whatever is an income. There are some of us, we have extra income. You just pay tithe on the salary you get. Who do you think you are deceiving? God? Did you not read your Bible? The only wise God. Every other person foolish. Who knows your end from your beginning? Who are you thinking you are playing games with? I said something to you last Sunday, you laughed. You see, the reason why I, I don't know how to calculate my tithe is because my business is on daily. I, you see, I sell and buy. You don't know how to calculate your tithe. But when you lost money, you know. When your business is going down, you know. D don't you know? No, don't you know when your business is going down? So why are you lying to yourself? God just knew that you are deceiving yourself. He knows your heart. He said, bring the tithe. Prove me. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, ideas that will cause you to prosper, that there will be no room enough to receive it. Go to number 11. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. When you hold back your tithe, you say, God, I will take care of the devourer. And who are you to take care of the devourer? He said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast their her fruit before the time in the field. Said the Lord of hosts. Twelve. And all nations shall call you blessed. For you shall be a delightsome land. Said the Lord of hosts. All this blessing is just keyed into one thing. Whenever you 
see God's blessing in the Bible, please endeavor to locate the condition. Every blessing of God has a condition. Until you fulfill the condition, you are not entitled to the blessing. Has your tithe produced anything to you? Why has it not? Why is the devourer embedding you? Why are you deceiving yourself? God is not interested in you standing here to pay tithe. God is interested in your faithfulness in paying tithe. Listen, tithe is just like tax. When you give your tithe, you have not started giving. Tithe is not giving. That is just an obligation on you. Tithe is God's, God's property that you are not entitled to it. You have not started giving. Now, if you are grumbling on 10%, what will you now do when you ask to give? He said, this whole nation have robbed me in tithe and offering. Today is the first Sunday of the year. We are changing our offerings. This is the time, this is the Sunday where everybody sit down and change their offerings. I've already changed mine. What God is interested in what I have now done is, let me see how faithful you are. Consistency. God is not interested. What was the problem of Saul? Incomplete obedience. A man lost his kingdom. May you not lose your kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ. A man lost his kingdom. Why? He disobeyed. Why did he disobey? He analyzed God. He reasoned God out and considered so many things. When you begin to consider many things, note it. You didn't send yourself to planet Earth. There is nothing happening to you that God is not aware. Can you obey me? Simple. The tight cards are here. And some people will be so fast to collect and pay the first year, uh, the first month, second month, third month, and they stop. When you stop, God stop. You don't pay tight, things become tight. If you are complaining that God did not do some things for you in the year 2008, uh, 2013, did you obey God to the fullest? When he said, go into all the world, into all the, 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 the earth and preach the gospel, did you, did you obey? Go and bring fruit that your fruit may remain. I will look at your fruit and bless you. Did you obey? So our problem is not that God is not hearing our prayer. Problem is not that God is not interested in what is happening to you. The problem is the problem of disobedience. Bow your heads. Let's pray. I want you to talk to God wherever you are. Before you talk to him, just ask yourself, am I in obedience? Why is my faith not working? Disobedience. How faithful am I? Did I obey God in all the instruction that is, in, is given to me on daily basis? When you are begging him to convert the man so that you can marry the man, were you obeying God? Did you not know what you were doing?
pray for yourself this morning. God, give me an obedient heart. I don't want to embark on this journey with catalog of disobedience in my life. A man that disobeys knows he is disobeying. He knows. Nobody needs to tell you. Stand to your feet. I say. Stand to your feet. Lift up your right hand as you stand. Say, Lord. I can't hear your voice. Somebody say, Lord. Create in me a clean heart, an obedient heart. Listen, all the problems that God had with the children of Israel, everything that is in your Bible from Genesis to Revelation, how God reacted, how God abandoned his people, how God sold them into slavery and sold them to the Babylonians was as a result of what? Disobedience. What brought Satan down? Lucifer. Son of the morning, the guardian of the, 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 the altar of God, the, 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 the morning star. What brought him down? Disobedience. God is not going to change because of you. I don't want you to go on this 14 days journey living in disobedience, praying and getting no answer. Why? You are in disobedience. Lift your hands. Say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I repent of all my disobedience. My disobedience. This morning. This morning. Change my life. Change my life. Help me. Help me. To obey you. To obey you. Lord. Lord. On this journey. On this journey. I want to obey you. I want to obey every you. Every instruction. Every instruction. From your servants. From your servants. I will obey. I will obey. Do you know that God has heard your, your prayer? What God is not going to look is your response. That's what God is going to look at. God is speaking to you every day. You ended last year coming late. You have started the year coming late. What do you think God should do to you? Some of you didn't even hear the first message I preached because you were not here. How will you continue like this and expect a change? Is your brain not working again? Stop analyzing God. You see, the reason why I come late is because we close late. When you get to heaven, you explain to him what you do with all your time. Last year, you were not here in any Tuesday meeting. Are you a member of First of Freedom? Yes! But Tuesday meeting, you were not around. And you are a worker. You are a leader. Can't you understand what you are doing? God is not going to come down to give you instruction. He will give you instruction through your pastor. The moment you disobey your pastor, you have disobeyed heaven. Lift your two hands. Say, Lord. Lord. Like Abraham of old. Like Abraham of old. I will obey. I will obey. Help me. Help me. To obey you. To obey you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord. Lord. I don't want to repeat. 
I don't want to repeat. 2013. 2013. In 2014. In 2014. I want a change. I want a change. And I want the change. And I want the change. To start within me. To start within me. First. First. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Change me. Change me. I am tired. I am tired of the present situation. Of the present situation. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Listen. The moment the prodigal son changed, his father responded. You are in a wrong re relationship. And you know it. And God is speaking to you. You are not. Rather you are sowing seed on the altar for God to be the father-in-law of the devil. You are sowing seed on the altar for a man to divorce the wife and marry you. Faith. Faith. You are ready to go for this 14 days fasting and praying. Keeping another man's wife. Keeping another woman's husband. Living in immorality. What God demands from us is obedience. Obedience. 